Money does grow on trees. That's right. I just said money does grow on trees. The exact opposite of what society has told us since young age. And my goal during this presentation is to debunk that myth for you all. So, how exactly does money grow on trees? Does it have to do with gardening? Does it have to do with planting? No, it has nothing to do with gardening and planting and everything to do with investing, specifically investing in the stock market and specifically investing at a young age as well. So in the stock market, there's something called dividends and dividends are these small sums of money given to investors as tokens of appreciation from the company. So let's say for example, I were to buy an Apple stock valued at about $100 and Apple had a dividend at 2%. By the end of the year, Apple will have paid me back $2 as a thank you for investing in their company. And now what I should be doing with those $2 is reinvesting that in Apple stock so that one, my holdings in the company increases, and two, as the stock appreciates in following years, my dividend output would be much, much greater. And this all relates to the snowball effect. As you guys can see from the graphic, the snowball effect is very, very simple. The only way to beat it out really is start on as high of a hill as possible so that as it reaches the bottom, it begins to grow with more pace and is much larger. So let's take a look at two examples right now that really highlight the power of investing at a young age. First off, we have Eric. Eric is 30 years old, he's a recent college graduate and is now making $60,000 a year. Eric has decided, you know what? I'm 30 now, it's time to start investing, start to take my retirement seriously. So what he chooses to do is, A, he uses the $1,000 he got from his bonus a few months ago and uses that as his starting capital. And two, spends and saves $600 a month and puts that in his saving account for his future. And when we put this in a stock market simulator, assuming two things, one, that he gets an 8% return rate in the market, which historically the market has actually given back about nine to 10%, so 8% is quite modest. And two, assuming that he takes his money out at 65 years old, the age he wishes to retire at, we see that Eric gets back $1.3 million in his savings by the time he's 65. Example number two, this, this is Kimberly. Kimberly is a 17 year old high school junior who is now working a minimum wage job. And funny story here actually, Kimberly wanted this huge sweet 16 party but unfortunately she couldn't have it because of COVID, so she had a sweet 17 party. And with that, she got a lot of gift money and decided she's gonna start using all of her gift money to start investing. So she starts off with $1,000 in capital, just like Eric, and that's coming from her gift money, and then puts in $600 a month from her earnings at work. Now when we put this in the stock market simulator with the same assumptions, 8% return rate, and two, taking out her money at 65, we see that Kimberly makes a whopping $3.7 million. And that's only from starting a few years earlier. Let's debrief. We saw Eric and we saw Kimberly. Eric started at 30, Kimberly at 17. They both took their money out at 65. 65 years old. One ended with $1.3 million, the other with $3.7 million. A little less than three times as much. And that, that's the power of the snowball effect. Now one may ask, well John, where and how do I start investing? And it all has to do with savings. But to put that in perspective, yes, we do live in a purchase culture. And trust me, apps like Venmo, Apple Pay, services like DoorDash, Instacart, don't make it any easier to save money because you're just buying, buying, buying without having to take out your cash, without having to take out your credit card. And with this, you're more inclined to make impulse purchases. And these impulse purchases will definitely come back to bite because they're a very big, important financial decisions to be made one day, whether that's buying your first car or putting a down payment on your first house. And this, this all relates to our digital footprint and financial footprint. So our digital footprint is A, for me it would be, how does my Facebook, how does my Instagram profile reflect the type of person I am? How does the way I send a text message reflect the type of person I am? Much in the same way our financial footprint is, well, how do the financial decisions I make today impact my financial tomorrow? And now to the nitty gritty, how do you really start to invest? Well, you wanna start off with creating an IRA, an individual retirement account, and specifically for young investors, a Roth IRA. A Roth IRA is pretty much where you put in post-tax money so that when you do choose to take your money out, when you do retire, all your money would be yours and you wouldn't have to pay a single penny to Uncle Sam the government. 
you would create an IRA or Roth IRA with a trusted brokerage, so Fidelity, E-Trade, the classic Vanguard, Robinhood. And lots of these brokerages now have teen investing accounts where you can begin investing at as young as 13 years old, under parental guidance, of course. All in all, I hope during the presentation you were able to see that you really don't need that much money to begin investing. Really, gift money, allowance will take you a very, very long way. I remember when I actually began to invest, it was the summer after my 10th grade year, and I began working in my junior year, so I put all my earnings into that, but in the summer I started with just gift money and allowance. And that took me a very long way, and I'm very excited to see it continue to grow. But I remember at first being very nervous, like what are the risks involved with putting my money in the stock market? And I have two big pieces of advice. That's one, ask questions. Ask parents, ask trusted guardians, trusted adults around you about the stock market and investing because they surely and most probably have a retirement account of their own and are a wealth of knowledge just waiting to be used. And tip number two is, well, after watching countless YouTube videos and reading heaps of books of, about investing, I've learned the importance about investing your money with safe investment. So that's mutual funds, that's ETFs, that's sometimes individual stocks, but not so much cryptocurrency, not so much NFTs, not so much trading options. Because at the end of the day, it's your money and you want to see it grow. So do your homework on every single investment you make. I hope I was able to debunk that myth for you all that money doesn't grow on trees because it really does if you know how to plant it. And today during this presentation, I was able to give you all a seed in your hand. The ball is now on your court for you to reflect on your spending, on your investments, on your saving today for a better future tomorrow. And again, the ball is in your court of when you choose to plant that seed, what you choose to plant that seed with, and how you choose to plant that seed. Thank you very much.